<clears throat> in this video, I'm not going to mince words. Let's have an honest conversation about settling. Now, everyone, everyone thinks about settling from time to time, like in settling in a relationship. Okay, you know what? Maybe my expectations were too high. Maybe what I'm looking for, especially when you're somewhat desperate and you're looking for a relationship, you want to get married, you're thinking, okay, maybe my standards are just too high. Maybe you've been in the position where other people have told you, hey, you know what? Your standards are just unreasonable and you need to settle a little bit. So we've all thought around this idea of settling. What does it mean to settle? Is settling an okay thing? When do you settle and what what is it? Okay, this is how I think about it. Okay. There's some people that have so unrealistic expectations that they don't, it, it doesn't match with the reality of who they are, okay? If you are, uh, let's say you're a guy watching this video and you're saying, okay, you know what? I want to I wanna marry a, a, you know, a supermodel and she needs to be a, a famous actor, okay? And she needs to, da, 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 da. okay, obviously that's unrealistic. Obviously those expectations are a little bit warped and <laughs> you got to ask yourself, do you meet those the, do you, do you, you know, put in the work to create, uh, you know, your physical aesthetic where, you know, that you, you match that, or do you have that kind of success in your career that that kind of person in that upper echelon would see you and be like, wow, that person is really successful. And they kind of meet me in that stride. No. Okay. So then maybe my expectations are a little bit blown out of the, out of the water. Okay. You need to lower your expectations a little bit. But here's the problem. Here's what I think is the biggest issue with settling. And this is why I would never tell anybody to settle. Okay. The thing is, is that settling, the idea of settling is often birthed out of our own insecurities. Okay. And let me explain that a little bit. If I were to look at a, a guy, let's say he's dating, dating a girl and there's lots of red flags. Okay. Either way, maybe it's a girl dating a guy and he's just bad news. Okay. But he says he loves Jesus, but there's some behaviors, these fits of outrage that will ha happen every once in a while. And then he'll say, oh, I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry. I, I won't do that again. And she, you know, she forgives him. And he, sa he says he likes to go to church and he likes Jesus, but he also likes to party and also likes to drink. And these things that just don't connect with what he's saying, he, who he is, right? And she's saying, you know what? He's really, he, he's really trying. He's really trying to be a good guy. He's really trying to do his best. Um, and I've had my own struggles too. I've had my struggles with, uh, you know, not, not being self-controlled or whether that's a, you know, I've struggled with pornography too or whatever it is. And you tend to justify that person's red flags by your own faults. Okay. You say, well, you know, maybe I don't deserve somebody better. You know, a guy could say, you know what, I, I, I've struggled with lust for a long time. So the fact that, you know, she's at the club or she's doing these things or whatever, even now, you know, I need to have grace for her because I used to be there. I don't think that's the way we should be looking at it at all. I really don't. I think that means we need to take a good hard look at ourselves and say, okay, Isaac, wow, you're letting your insecure insecurities and your own lack of self-worth and your lack of identity uh, cause you to go on a path that's going to be harmful for you in the long run. Okay. We're all familiar with this idea of not being unequally yoked. Okay. God says in the Bible that we should not be unequally yoked with a believer. If you guys are familiar with the idea of a yoke, it's this thing that rests on two oxen. Okay. And if the oxen are level, then, and it rests on their shoulders as they pull something, right? Then it's going to be smooth. It's going to be, you know, efficient. It's going to be, it's going to work. But if two oxen are, are not level, right, if they're unequally yoked, if it's one's down here, one's up here, um, and one's shorter than the other, whatever, it's just going to be a mess. And, you know, they're going to pull the cart in all sorts of different ways. It's not going to be pull it with efficiency. Okay. Jesus says, the Bible says, don't be unequally yoked with an unbeliever in the context of marriage and, and a business relationship, whatever. Okay. This is, this is what we're thinking about. So we know this. Why does this not... Why does this not connect with, with what, how we're living now? Why, why do we make excuses? Why do we live differently? Why do we not like observe this sometimes? Okay. It's because number one, we're honestly, we're desperate. I just want to be in a relationship, but, but where does that desperation come from? Let's take a, a deeper look at that. We all want love. We all want love. We all want to be loved. And so if you're lonely, if you feel like, man, everyone else is getting a relationship, everyone else is being loved, 
I just want to be loved. So what am I going to do? I'm going to settle. I'm going to say, yeah, this person, they got some yellow flags, maybe some red flags. Their, their talk is not, their character is not lining up with their talk. And yet, why do I continue to pursue them? Or why do I continue to let them pursue me? Because I, I like being loved. I like, to have, I like having attention. I like fantasizing about the idea of, of us being together. And you're like, okay, this, is, this feels safe. This feels like I'm, I'm getting somewhere. It feels like I'm not behind anymore. And you're willing to settle. Here's the deal. Is that when we are secure, okay, th- this is the ideal world. When we are secure in who we are in how we are loved by others around us and by God, we are much less likely to settle for something in a relationship that's going to be harmful for us. We are much less likely. Why? Because we're not looking for them to fill these core needs within us. So then we're not as likely to just go with whoever gives us attention. Okay? If you find yourself constantly being um, swept up in uh, these relationships, in, you know, just one after another after another, or just playing into whoever gives you attention, you need to take a good hard look at yourself and say, this is, why do I keep doing this? Well, because I, I didn't get love somewhere that I should have when I was younger. And right now I'm not experiencing the love of God that I, I should be experiencing. And, I, and I'm not finding that in him. And instead I'm trying to look for other people to fulfill that. When you look at settling too, often it's a desire to just for guys, especially and for girls too. I don't want to just say it's just a guy thing. It is definitely a lot of girls, but I would say most guys would think this way is that they want to be sexually satisfied. That's just the truth. I don't want to mince words here. Um, they want to be sexually satisfied. So they are looking to get married, right? If you're a Christian guy, then you're not looking for that outside of marriage. And so you're like, okay, let me just find somebody so I can marry. So then I can do that with them. As crazy as that seems, I mean, the, the sexual pull is strong. And so what, what do you need in those instances? Well, you need self-control. <laughs> you need some discernment. You need somebody to slap you across the face every once in a while and say, hey, she's really pretty. She is really pretty. But don't get lost in her beauty and stop evaluating, hey, is this really the person when the beauty fades, when the wrinkles come, that I'm going to want to serve God with, that I'm going to want to be with because of who they are, because of who you know, uh, how they, um, you know, work with me and my mission and the kind of partnership and the friendship that we have. Is that, is that a big, is that a big thing? Or is it just, man, they're so pretty. They're so pretty. I can't, I just want to be with them. I, you know, I'm willing to look past all the, the red flags, all the things that are problematic because I just really want to be with them physically. Okay. That's something to keep in mind. People will value much more the past than the present and the future. Okay. And you see this a lot, even in current dating men's podcasts. Okay. For men that are talking about the types of women that they're interested in, or that we, you know, you should pursue as a man. And these are really like alpha men, sigma men, whatever you want to call it. And they're talking about, you know, the primary issues about the woman's past. And as opposed to how I would what I would encourage you to with your man or a woman is to see their present and their future as primary, their present and their future as primary. Why? Um, Because God redeems and he forgives and he restores. And if somebody has just lived the, you know, the whole, their whole life in the, in the church and they're kind of, you know, in and out and whatever. And sometimes it's just, it's all talk for them. And, you know, they're not really living the Christian life, but they're doing good enough. And, and they're trying to be a good person. And sure, they stay pure, you know, for, from the, you know, the, the basic understanding of it. But in their heart, their heart is hard. Their heart is hard. And so on the surface, you might be like, wow, this seems like, you know, the person. Wow, they've been good. But their heart is hard towards God and towards others. They're just kind of doing it because they think they're a good person and they're trying to earn their way to heaven versus somebody that they made some mistakes. Okay. That's hard. Got to work through that. Yeah, for sure. But where are they now? Oh, they're on fire for God. They see God's forgiveness and his restoration and, and daily they're, they're looking to receive that 
in, in place of their shame. And for you to step into this and say, hey, I, I'm going to look at direction of your present much more than your direction of your past. Okay, because that's what's that that is what's primary. So would I ever say settle? No, no, I would never say settle. I say I would say you need to have, you know, reasonable expectations based on who you are, right? And if you want to heighten your expectations of what you want in a partner, then heighten your expectations of what you expect of yourself, right? If you if you are thinking, you know, hey, my wife, she should get up every morning and have a one hour Bible study. That's that's where she needed she would she should be. And then you look at your own life and you're not doing that. It's like, bro, bro, maybe settle down. Also, I think there's a place for grace. There is a place for grace to say, hey, maybe I'm further along the the spiritual maturity than they are, but at least they're going in the same direction, right? So many people will use that as an excuse. Oh, you know, I'm just more spiritually mature than them, but they're just a baby Christian. But it's like, are they a baby Christian that's going in the right direction? Or are they somebody that's always claimed to be a Christian that's never really made any movement in their whole entire life? I know some people are saying, hey, Isaac, you know, my parents started dating and when my mom wasn't a Christian and she ended up becoming Christian and now my whole family's Christian and, and it's awesome, right? Um, I'm saying that just because God did something amazing out of that particular instance doesn't mean that should be the norm or what we should encourage people to. I'm not going to say, oh, you know what, girl, you know, you go date that non-Christian guy and you make him a Christian and uh, you change that lineage forever and like that's your evangelism. I wouldn't say that. Why? Well, it's going to put her in a lot of heartache. And at the end of the day, I don't know God's will. Maybe he's not going to become a Christian and she's going to settle and she's going to say, you know what? I formed all these bonds with this guy and, you know, he's led me and maybe we've crossed some boundaries. And now I feel like I just, I, I have to stay with him or I have to be with him or I want to because, you know, he's my person, even though he doesn't believe in Jesus. That's, that's not a position you want to put yourself in. Okay, so even though it works out for some people and, and a lot of difficult situations, there's beauty that comes out of that. That's not what you should be striving for. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts about this in the comments down below. Thanks so much for watching and until next time, keep pursuing the mission.